The integument is a cutaneous membrane. As with all tissue membranes, cutaneous membranes consist of connective tissue lined with epithelial tissue. In earlier lessons of Module 5, we examined the epithelium of the integument, namely the epidermis. The epidermis is called such because it sits above, or on top of, a layer of connective tissue called the dermis. It is to the dermis we turn our attention in Module 5.4. Let's begin our exploration of the structure and function of the dermis now. The dermis lies sandwiched between an epithelial tissue above, namely the epidermis, and a layer of fatty connective tissue beneath, appropriately called the hypodermis. The hypodermis is also known as the subcutaneous membrane, since it rests beneath the cutaneous membrane, which is the integument, or skin. The hypodermis, technically, is not part of the integument. We will take time, however, in Module 5.5, to examine its key characteristics and functions, given its intimate relationship with the dermis. The dermis has two major layers, a superficial papillary layer and a deeper reticular layer. The papillary layer, named after the dermal papillae, consists of loose connective areolar tissue that supports and nourishes the epidermis. This region contains the capillaries, lymphatic vessels, and sensory neurons that supply the surface of the skin. The deeper reticular layer consists of an interwoven meshwork of dense, irregular connective tissue containing both elastic fibers and collagen fibers. The elastic fibers provide flexibility, and the collagen fibers limit that flexibility to prevent damage to the tissue. Bundles of collagen fibers blend into those of the papillary layer above, blurring the boundary between these layers. Collagen fibers of the reticular layer also extend into the deeper hypodermis. In addition to protein-based elastic and collagen fibers, the dermis contains the mixed cell populations of connective tissue proper. The dominant cell type of the dermis is the fibroblast. Accessory organs, such as hair follicles and sweat glands, while produced from and lined with epithelial cells, extend downward into the dermis. Other organ systems interact with the skin through their connections to the dermis. For example, both dermal layers contain a network of blood vessels of the cardiovascular system, lymphatic vessels of the lymphatic system, and nerve fibers of the nervous system. Let's discuss each briefly. Arteries supplying the skin lie deep in the hypodermis. Branches of these arteries form two networks, or plexuses, in the dermis. The deeper network lies along the border of the hypodermis with the reticular layer of the dermis. This network is called the cutaneous plexus. Branches of these arteries supply both adipose tissue in the hypodermis below and the tissues of the integument above. As small arteries travel toward the epidermis, branches supply the hair follicles, sweat glands, and other structures in the dermis. Upon reaching the papillary layer, the small arteries form another network called the subpapillary plexus. It provides blood to capillary loops that follow the contours of the epidermis-dermis boundary. Here, nutrients and oxygen are exchanged for carbon dioxide and waste products. These capillaries then empty into small veins of the subpapillary plexus. These small veins, in turn, drain into veins accompanying arteries of the cutaneous plexus. This network connects to larger veins in the deep hypodermis. Both blood vessels and lymphatic vessels in the dermis help local tissues defend and repair themselves after injury or infection. We have already noted in earlier lessons that the deeper layers of the epidermis contain tactile discs, namely Merkel cells. These are fine touch and pressure receptors. The epidermis also contains extensions of sensory neurons that provide sensations of pain and temperature. The dermis contains similar receptors, as well as other more specialized receptors. Examples include receptors sensitive to light touch, namely tactile Meissner's corpuscles, located in dermal papillae, and receptors sensitive to deep pressure and vibration, namely lamellated Pacinian corpuscles in the reticular layer of the dermis. Thus, the integument is a sensory structure. Beyond monitoring sensory receptors in the dermis and the deeper layers of the epidermis, the nerve fibers found in the integument also control blood flow and adjust gland secretion rates. Finally, on a clinical note related to our study of the dermis, 
we pause to discuss the topic of dermatitis, or inflammation of the dermis. Inflammation is a complex process that helps defend the body against pathogens and injury. Skin inflammation can be very painful because skin contains an abundance of sensory receptors. Dermatitis is an inflammation of the skin that primarily involves the papillary layer of the dermis. The inflammation typically begins in an area of skin that is exposed to infection or is irritated by chemicals, radiation, or mechanical stimuli such as scratching. Dermatitis may cause no discomfort, or it may produce an annoying itch. Sometimes the condition can be quite painful, and the inflammation can spread rapidly across the entire integument. Dermatitis has many forms. Some of them are common. Contact dermatitis generally occurs in response to strong chemical irritants such as those produced by poison ivy. It produces an itchy rash that may spread to other areas. Eczema can be triggered by temperature changes, the presence of fungi, or chemical irritants, greases, detergents, or even stress. Hereditary factors, environmental factors, or both can promote its development. Diaper rash is a localized dermatitis caused by a combination of moisture, irritating chemicals from fecal or urinary waste, and microorganisms, frequently the yeast candida, which is a fungus. Urticaria, also called hives, is an extensive allergic response to a food, drug, insect bite, infection, stress, or some other stimulus. In summary, the dermis is one of two major structures in the integument. The dermis and epidermis comprise the skin. The dermis has two layers, a papillary layer of loose areolar connective tissue and a reticular layer of dense irregular connective tissue. The dermis also contains cells from other body systems, including neurons of the peripheral nervous system and blood vessels of the cardiovascular system. The papillary layer of the dermis may also become inflamed when exposed to irritants such as chemicals and bacteria and temperature fluctuations. Join me in our next lesson as we briefly overview features of the hypodermis or subcutaneous membrane in Module 5.5.